Hey, listeners, just before we get into today's podcast, I just wanted to give a shout out to today's sponsor, The Pretentious Pickle Company. The Pretentious Pickle Company is located at 190 Water Street right here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. If you are a pickled fan, you can find everything under the sun here that has been pickled, um, whether it be obviously pickled cucumbers, but they do cauliflower, green beans, carrots, onions, okra. Uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, eggs, anything that you can pickle, they do pickle. It's all delicious. They have tons of things to choose from. It's made right there in their own kitchen, all locally made, all locally sourced. And they're just such a great place to go. So if you live here in Plymouth, by all means, swing down to 190 Water Street and check them out. They are open uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 10 to 4, and Sundays, 11 to 4. But if you're not local to Plymouth, you can still enjoy Pretentious Pickle Company by heading over to www.pretentiouspickle.com and you can order right there and they'll ship it to you. So you can get pickles locally sourced somewhere else and shipped right to you and uh, they're all delicious. So definitely check them out. Thank you to the Pretentious Pickle people. Across the line Welcome back to the Old Colony Cast, a podcast about all things Plymouth and surrounding areas. And I'm joined, as always, by super producer Fish. Yeah, hello. And co-host Hannah. Hello. What's going on, Hannah? Uh, you know, lots of things, this, that. Yeah, so it's been an interesting year already in 2021. There's been lots to talk about. Uh, what are we talking about today? Um, something pretty specific near and dear to my heart, my house and my community. We're talking about the special town meeting coming up in Wareham, April 10th, uh, where the town will be voting on article one of that, uh, special town meeting, which is the called the quote unquote hospitality recreation and entertainment district. So uh, what exactly is that? Um, I mean, it's it's an area zoned out in Wareham that is uh, right now it's for a few different type of zonings, but it's really they're trying to move it forward and get it passed to be able to build and develop the land there that is just now wild. Like it's undeveloped for the most part um, for pretty much anything anything that hospitality recreation and entertainment includes which is a lot of different things yeah that that seems like it's painted with a pretty broad brush right there correct and building on this is bad yes it is um uh most people would find it that it's bad it's pretty sensitive land for a few different reasons um that we can talk about today the hospitality and recreation uh zoning proposal um, which was introduced by an outside developer group uh, to the planning board for, of the town of Wareham. And it is the Notos group, and they did the, like, it's a new kind of, it's kind of new uh, golf course in the Quincy Quarries. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys have heard of it. Sure. And then they also did Marina Bay in Quincy. Mm-hmm. So they did, it's just overall, like, really upscale kind of looking development and that's what they do and those are like their two big claims to fame um and this zoning proposal would potentially increase uh you know revenue for the town it's a 300 million dollar plus economic uh development project and it includes a gaming facility which is so this is a casino but also everything else under the sun. So it, it has uh, zoned for housing. It's zoned for hmm. like hospitality. So that's hotels. Recreation is quite literally anything that is recreation. Yeah. Uh, and for zoned for casinos. But zoning laws for casinos, specifically in Massachusetts, are pretty specific. So. Um, 
the family that is part of the Nodos group, which is the group that brought this uh, forward, is the O'Connells. And if you look at their website, they are a very Kennedy-esque looking group. Yeah. Um, so very preppy white people? Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and they... I mean, and the, their Kennedy's even, like, beyond that as the best way I could explain it because I'll tell you a little bit about them. But, uh, I mean, from all I can see and from all accounts, the things that they've developed are really good quality pieces of whatever, right? Like, people like it. It's yeah. not like they are hurting any communities by it. The areas that needed that development or the areas where they did develop really needed it. So, so far, like, I can't really say anything terrible about what they've done for uh, Quincy at least. Mm -hmm. Um, so their idea for what they're calling Wareham Park, yeah. uh, would create over potentially what they say, a thousand permanent jobs, generate 50 million in annual state revenue, um, and revive the state's local thoroughbred racing. Oh. So I was also That's thinking weird. of doing a horse, horse racing, yeah. which is not, isn't happening in years. Uh, they do carriage racing in Plainville, yeah. which isn't like the thoroughbred horse racing. No, from what I understand, it's like a horse. Basically, it's charity racing, but without all the yes, you know, gladiators and, violence and <laughs> without everything that made it interesting for you know, turn the Millennium Romans. Right. Um. So that and on their website, they have a page for this per, you know plan, but. There's nothing there. It says Wareham Park, exciting announcement coming soon, right? And this is a proposal they brought to the selectmen in Wareham, but this was before we were rezoning anything. Mm -hmm. um, so now to get into like the details of the proposal, which is massive. Like I said, it literally includes anything under the sun. The original plan for this area of development was a quarter size of the landmass of Wareham. Wow. I, I'm sorry. The whole, like a quarter of the whole town was there. Yes. That is um, a lot. Yeah, that's a big ask. Yes. And so but, they decreased it to 963 acres. Okay, that's still a big ask. Decreased by how much? <laughs> Just decreased by a lot. It was like 16-ish 16, 16 percent. Okay. Yeah, so Wareham's not big. But Wareham's not big, but at the same time, is Wareham very not developed? Yes. In a way that I don't really think, because I'm going to be honest, I know where Wareham is, and, but having only driven through the parts that take me to places I'd rather be, no no offense to Hannah's house, mm -hmm. I don't know much about the entire thing. So when you say we're going to develop a quarter of it, that only tells me that at least a quarter of Wareham hasn't been worked on i guess is the best yeah way to yeah like, so it's definitely not it the area is like almost entirely wooded it it crosses over a mixture of already owned property by the graziano cement company um that uses it a small portion of the land like really really small portion of it for a gravel pit um nothing wrong with living next to a gravel pit nope and it's it's in the middle of the woods too like they didn't expand and like really tear down a lot of the wooded area around it um but they own a good amount of it. And then the other part is, like, town-owned, I believe. And some of it is actually on, like, not preservation land, but it's, it's like, wildlife-managed land for okay. certain just brooks. Uh, the, like, what we were talking about as far as, like, a lot, like water mm -hmm. and aquifers and stuff like that. So um, it is a wildlife-managed area, and that is very close to – or goes up to Red Brook, which is part of Plymouth. So this, how do I describe the size of this area? It is, do you know where Cranberry Highway is in Wareham? Yeah. Yes. The old one or the new one? Yes. New one. New one. So do you know wait, where Waterwiz is? Wait, how old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, wait, how old when you say old one? I mean, because technically Cranberry Highway is where Cranberry Crossing is too. That, like, can you get, kind of give me a time frame? Because... A lot of the time I drove through Wareham, I was on my way to Miles Stanch, and that would have been in the late 90s. So Cranberry Crossing wasn't there yet, and okay. that's not really where people but were I do from. know where Water, Fizz, Water Wiz is. Yeah, Water Fizz. 
<laughs> it's been a day, okay? Yeah. It's so if you think of where like the neighborhood that goes up kind of near Waterwiz, um, and there's Home Depot, it's all the wooded area and the undeveloped like ponds okay, that are yeah. behind yeah, there. Yeah, I know what that is. Mm-hmm. And it reaches from there out to to the other border of Plymouth, both on its north and uh west side, I okay, believe. Okay, that's pretty big. It's large. That's there's a lot because it's like the waterways isn't that close to right. Plymouth, yeah. Um, so exactly right. If you know where water is, it's kind of good distinction as to like how far over the land yeah, actually I mean, comes from the beginning of Cranberry Highway over to yeah, the, like, like, the end. As someone who, when I was a Boy Scout, used to drive through that to get to Miles Standish for boys mm-hmm. for camp. You hit waterways, but you weren't remotely. You weren't as close to there as you wanted to be. Right. Yeah. So um, it's it's pretty big, and like I said, it. There's a lot of different things in there. That it's partially zoned for, uh, ha- like just regular housing right yeah. now, like uh, residential, residential, and then it's zoned for whatever it is that the Grazianos have it zoned for. Like they have their land purchased and they're using it for not necessarily commercial, but it's something along those lines. Industrial related. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so that's just the general well, – I'll leave it at that for, as far as, like, the general mass and area of where the land actually is um, because I wanted to just, like, step off of that for a second and talk about the family that is um, hoping to develop. Now, they haven't actually bid on anything, and this zoning proposal hasn't gone through yet. No, because mm-hmm. you've been – Yes. It's – you're looking at what – I think you said the date had been moved to April 10th. April 10th is a special yeah. town meeting for it. Yep. So um, the founders, uh, who is, I believe, Brother Robert O'Connell, the founder is. <laughs> is it Robert? It is Robert. It's I just first heard it. Line? Yep. No, that's his brother. Okay. Either way, the founder's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, in 2009, um, and this honestly still has nothing to do with the people, but it is something that came out in some articles uh, about them, um, and the family did speak out and say that they are, you know, it has nothing to do with them, and they fully, uh, you know, own that their, their family did something bad, and they, you know, are totally at fault for the crimes they were committed of. Um, so Robert O'Connell in 2009 shot uh, another man and was sentenced to seven months in prison when he was co- finally convicted of it in 2012. I'm sorry, seven months for shooting a guy? And he was convicted of it in 2012. So he like wasn't even, if he had posted bail, which I'm assuming he did, yeah. he wasn't actually in. Well, uh, yeah, but yeah. It, I mean, that I can understand as the legal system. So the, the man survived. Time. So he yeah. was. I mean. Man, that is, seven months it's is privilege is showing. Yeah, like <laughs> no, no offense. If I shoot Andy, it's I'm gonna get more than seven months. Yeah, it was pretty That's crazy. Right. He maybe had a good legal team. So yeah. it was a he was sentenced uh, and charged with a or convicted of assault with intent to murder. So so wait, that was attempted seven months for attempted murder. It says spe- said specifically intent to murder. So I okay, don't know so if that's Okay, so if you different. shoot a guy and you're trying to kill him, seven months is, like, I could understand giving him seven months if it is super obviously an accident. It's like, yeah. I'm sorry, I was cleaning my gun and it went off and I shot Annie in the face. Or we were hunting and I shot him in the face because that is apparently what you do. Yeah, it's a little wacky. It's Yeah, it's it's iffy. Uh, and the founder's uncle, William O'Connell, was sentenced to three years probation for a cocaine charge in 2013. It was considered a misdemeanor. Um, and he had also been charged for four counts of statutory rape. Oh. And cocaine trafficking. And the charges were dropped after the alleged victim, uh, Rebecca Resendez, mm. died in a car crash before the case was settled. And yes, you're reading that correctly. She was 14 <laughs> when it happened. No, I'm sorry. I just I knew a uh, Becky Resendez when I was oh 14. I don't think it's the same girl. No, because no, she's she died when she was 17. Yeah, too. yeah, no, she was older. Yeah, and is, as far as I know, still alive. But it was one of those things where you you said that and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. 
Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah, but. That would have been crazy, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. You said how much? How long was he? You said probation for that? He actually never was convicted of it because the. Because she refused to. No, she was, she she was going through with it. She died and they just stopped the proceedings. That is. Yeah. Really crazy. That's the polite way of saying it. Um, which it, all of, reading all of that was just like a little mind blowing. But again, um, just to reinforce like what the family in, says about it that actually run the Nodos group. Um, he says that his brother and his uncle were guilty in very serious crimes and have brought great shame to the family. And it's a burden they've lived with for many years to put the quote kind of loosely. It was, okay, so the... The brother and the, you said, uncle? Yep. So they're not involved with any of this? No, nope, not at all. Okay, I can... I can. Yeah. I am not going to re- hold somebody responsible for the crimes committed by their family members. Right. They are not their brother's keeper. Right. It uh, it's, has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about and focus on. I, and again, as for all intents and purposes, this group has shown nothing but like quality work. Okay, um, so it, it, it's the kind of thing where... It's just an interesting, like, what yeah. the heck on like top of everything that's of the, going on? It, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, any big, powerful family is going to have, I can't even say skeleton now, closet, but... Uh, Paul, like, like any, calling I back mean, the, the Kennedy-esque. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you go to Kennedy-esque, I mean, <laughs> you know, Chappaquiddick, or yeah. if you go to uh, Jimmy's Car- Jimmy Carter's brother, whose name escapes me because I was not there in the 70s. Yeah, same, I wasn't either. Yeah, or, but or <laughs> I know what uh, you're Bill, Clinton, about, though. Bill Clinton's brother. It's like yes, yes. They or, all you know, have stuff. Jeb Bush, please right. clap. <laughs> but yeah, it's the kind of thing where you can't, you shouldn't be held accountable for what your like uncle or brother have done if they're not involved with it. it it's like yeah, it's it's awful, but it's like I'm it. it it's not me, right? Yeah. So mo- moving on, I suppose. Um. Oh, I just got an update Oh, for the Onset Fire District and Water Commissioner. Okay. So uh, this is, I mean, when you hear it, it's not live, but we're recording it live. So <laughs> It's something. It's live to us. Right? Okay. So um, I'll get back to that in case we need it. But uh, since the proposal, there's been several board meetings around uh, the development ar- about this zoning because it's it's massive. It could be massive for the town, um, but that, like any anything you do, there's like consequences. This is a big, oh, of course. Big, I mean, big. Like, proposal. It might be a huge deal economically, but at the same time, it's got environmental and social impacts that you need to take into account and address because. Like, just randomly, I'm going to build here is not something we do anymore. Oh, we, my gosh. We take the world. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. It was the hospitality, entertainment, and recreational zoning overlay. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Oh, okay. Yes. Just so if anyone's hearing it, they hear the correct name. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, it's, it's a big deal. So that they have been given um, people on the... We have an open town meeting set up, so sure. you, you yeah, don't I'm, need to, like... You can just show up and vote if you live there. Yes. Yeah, Bridgewater was, until fairly recently, run the same way. I, mean, I have a feeling Wareham might be changing there soon, so, like... <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's... Yeah. With an open town meeting, anyone can come up and speak on an issue, too, yeah. from the public. So, we d- we do Zoom meetings, and the select men slash the board, development and planning board, have allowed, as they should, to let people speak... Um, on behalf of this issue and not I've yet to hear someone say they're in favor for it and once they hear the cons most people are not I've seen like five people on Facebook that are like okay and it's because they truly don't understand the implications that could yeah, go wrong yeah it's the kind of thing where hey it's really good until you put you know literally any thought into it mm-hmm so, uh, like I said, they let us speak, but if the ideas and things that are being said become repetitive, they shut down the meeting. Sure. But in I turn, mean, or shut down the comments, but in turn, it also shuts down their ability to see how many people actually don't want it. Yeah, it's like, like I can kind of see it from their perspective. It's a matter of, look, you're like the fifth person to say the exact same thing, and I 
get it, but it's the kind of thing where if you're shutting down the comments, you're also shutting down the... I mean, if they're, it's the fifth person, but how many people are in line behind them say exactly the same thing because yeah. it's a weight of numbers kind of thing. So I've been a part of majority of the meetings that have taken place on the for the development board um, about this, and I can say just from personal reference, I... I'm new to town meetings. I don't know how they're supposed to go, but it seems, and I get they're trying to move things forward in a timely manner. Uh, but just from the amount of people who have written in that I know of about what they actually feel f- for this proposal and like how they actually want this to go, it doesn't seem like any of their concerns are being answered. So as someone who does not live in one of the affected towns, everything I know about it has basically been via Hannah sharing it and making a point of it on Facebook and Instagram. It seems like the kind of thing where it's not necessarily a great idea environmentally. Mm -hmm. And while I understand that the economic development town is vital to a town's growth and survival, it's the kind of thing where they're going about it in a way that seems a little like this is not necessarily the safest or best or most, um, this is not the best way to go about this. It's just not like a good compromise between what everyone wants. Yeah, and, like and it's all. it's the kind of thing where you like you have to compromise between you have to make a compromise. You have to make have an understanding between what's going on and what will mm-hmm. work. But at the same time, you have to work within the bounds of. I'm gonna say reality, but it's the kind of thing where, like, this is, yeah, w- this is the reality on the ground, and yeah. if you're not willing to make you, you, like this is this is where the town is. This is where the water is. This is how the brooks work. And like, if you try to just ignore it, you are going to make things much, much worse and much, much more irreversible. Yeah, like, it's like you can point. you can make a much bigger mess and is going to be much harder to clean up than anybody really wants to deal with. Yes. Um, for sure, not worth the the. It does not outweigh the risk. No, and at it's this point. like even just economic, financially, it's not worth spent. It's not worth the amount of money it's going to cost to clean up after the mess you make. So yeah. don't make the mess in the first place. So our um, after the proposal was made in 2019, a Facebook group was made shortly after. So there are people who have been had their so, eyes on this. So this is basically going for two years. Yeah, and they've, okay. they've pushed it off. There was some issues with uh, the, the idea of being able to get a gambling permit um, because we know like, you because can't have gambling, one close. Well, yeah, and gambling permits in Massachusetts are... They're few and far. They're few <laughs> and they're far between and they are... Like, as someone who's been living, you know, a town and a half away from Taunton for the last yes. um, 40-ish years and has been watching them try to get a um, casino set up, it's not easy. Mm-mm. It's really hard to and, pull off. And Taunton and uh, it's, might be changing the plans yeah, to this. Yeah, Taunton and in Middle are doing the same thing. And it's yeah. like, guys, it's a... Who wants a casino that bad? It's 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 who wants to see it bad and who has the necessary roadway and infrastructure to set it up. Yeah. It is. It's a lot. There's a lot going. I mean, you are developing a major parcel, part yeah. of land, and you are not just putting a casino. It's a casino, and everything you need to make sure is there to support a casino mm-hmm. via electrical and water and waste and parking and housing, housing and you know. Roadway changes. If you're putting it anywhere that's not on a major roadway, you have to make wholesale changes to that roadway because you are tra- upping the traffic. And if it's a not a major road, y- yeah, you can't have like this is the best way to get to the casino, and it's through somebody's neighborhood. Yeah. You just, so you actually just hit the nail on the head. That I mean, <laughs> as someone who. I'll be honest, 99% of what I know about urban planning is comes from playing City Skyline in the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, you don't do that because it, it's going to turn traffic into a horrible nightmare. So for, And nobody wants to live with that. For anyone that knows the area, the, the name of the road that the it will lay right next to is Glen Charlie Road. It's going to abut some of the property that are the, that's there. Um, I li- so when you say property, you mean like residential? Yes, like residential. Homes. Like yes. this is where, you know, Here's my house. Here's my 
backyard. Here's the casino. Yeah. Some of them. That is, I'm going to say politely, <clears throat> and yes. I'm going to, yeah, and I don't know how to politely so respond the to area that. that is not okay. The area became of interest because we do have a very close uh, access to Route 25, and their plan would include yeah. another entryway to the highway, which is just one of those arguments to this whole casino brings people to the town. Well, it... Does it if there's a yeah? But if you're coming, yeah, coming, if you're coming right off the highway to get, there, I mean, yeah. on the one hand, I'm glad it the traffic. I'm, it's would a be direct handled. exit, yeah. but at the same time, if you if if the only thing you're going to have before is casino, no one's going to go to. Give me a minute. I will. Little red smoke. No, that's in Carver. Yeah, it's close. But look, this is the thing. It's like no, no one's, one's going go go to go to Waterways. No one's going to go to anything else in Carver <laughs> if you're getting off the highway, going to the casino, getting back on the highway. Yeah. So, but it is a trade-off of you don't necessarily want casino traffic going through like Glen Charlie Road. Town roads. Yeah, that's yeah. a road. It's and it's like, just a really it's a it's a neighborhood road that's already taken a lot of extra traffic than it can handle because Plymouth has a development right on the other line. This neighborhood Yes, where where, is, where you throw stones. We've discussed this in the past. Yes, you know the one. The, the, the houses that Hannah throws rocks at. It's the Red Brook development. I don't actually throw rocks at it. I think it's it's a pretty nice area. Hannah, quote unquote, <laughs> doesn't throw rock. Technically, they're stones because she writes 1620 on them. So um, They're historical artifacts. So we've talked a little bit about one of the major themes in the opposition against this. And I'm part of the Facebook group, which is the South Coast Residents Against the Horse Racing casi- slash Casino. Yeah, well, horse racing is, uh, I'll be honest, a little iffy for me anyway. But it seems pretty outdated. It's, it's <laughs> the kind of thing. I mean, there's a reason that, like, Raynham doesn't have a dog track anymore. There's yeah. a reason I don't think Suffolk Downs nope. still does anything. Yes. Like, horse, like, I get that it's, there's a ton of, like, a ton of money involved. Yeah, I right. get that places like... The, like the Kentucky Derby and give me anything else the Triple Crown right now. I can't think of anything. No, that's Belmont all Stakes. That, it really doesn't matter. So, I mean. <laughs> but, like, I get there's a ton of money in there, but at the same time, if you're not, like, it's not great for the animals. It's not great for anyone involved. It's mm-hmm. the kind of thing where it's, like, like, people racing is cool because everyone involved makes a decision to go, I want to be a runner. Mm-hmm. If Horses don't have that agency, I guess is the way to describe yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, they don't have the rep- like, So it's no like, one's... yeah, the horse is fast. Yeah, but the horse doesn't care. The horse yeah. really just wants to eat his oats and, you know. Sow his oats. Th- 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 <laughs> thank you, Hannah. You're welcome. I was trying to find a way to segue into that. And you know what? That is by far <laughs> the best pun we can make. So we're going to run with that. So in that group. But yeah. Thank you, Hannah. You're welcome. That group started off initially against the whole concept of casino horse racing, but it has grown into so much more because the more that comes out about this development, the more people are educated on what that land is truly preserving. So um, it says in the zoning that it doesn't refer to the groundwater as an aquifer, or should I really be specific and say the sole source aquifer? Okay. So uh, as someone who is not a professional geologist when you say sole source aquifer can you kind of dig into that a little so that it's really the um it's for plymouth carver and wareham and it's what feeds the major reservoirs okay for the so town. basically it is the source of drinking water for everyone who lives in yes that's Okay, now that I've said that a lot, I realized I don't know what my hometown's aquifer is. And uh, and it, it's, it's hard it's, to say because that area abuts the town, so it's right there. Yeah, I, I'm like right next tri-town. door, and I'm and if it's artesian, I my family my house is on a well, and yeah. we have an artesian. We have a basically a well pump that digs yeah. into the ground and pumps water up. So but uh, I don't yeah, know where that water. I don't know where that water is flowing from or to. Now that I think that out loud. So you'd be yeah, you'd be getting but it from I the just, aquifer at some. I assume another. it's coming to the aquifer, but I don't know which way it goes. Like, if you ruin it, as long as it doesn't move upstream, I don't know how much I'm going to care. Yeah. Outside of the fact that I'm not a horrible human being. Correct. And I prefer a lot of my friends and neighbors not to have polluted drinking water for horse racing. So so I prefer that, too. And that's where... Well, yeah, but it's your drinking water. Yes. You're doing it because you don't want dirty water. I don't want... I'm doing it because I don't want you to have drink so dirty water. I'm a much better person because of this. Here's the thing. Um, I don't 
I've written letters to many people and like political, like I've gone all the way up federally because okay. I don't think this should happen in my town, but I don't think it should happen in any town. I don't think you should be allowed to build on a town's water source. No, and I mean, it that seems very, very not bright. So I just, yeah, it's not smart, but that's, that's become one of the major oppositions and themes for the residents who do not want that to happen. And an aquifer, for people who don't know, is truly just your source of groundwater. And some people in towns and places are lucky enough where their aquifer is um, partnered with their brook streams and um, what was the word I used earlier? Reservoirs. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, um, but is it is the aquifer, aquifer for Wareham. And I don't know how much of it overlays on the sole source aquifer for the uh, Tri-Town area of Carver, Wareham, and Plymouth. But um, I know it's enough to, for people to be really upset about it. <laughs> it well, people like people like clean water. As someone who hangs out on the town's Facebook page because I like knowing when the power goes out, like 70% of the posts are, hey, my water is iffy. What are you people doing with my, with my right. water? Because... Nobody likes their water being brown. Nobody likes their water smelling funny. Like the one thing everyone wants is to get up in the morning, take a shower, and have clean a nice water. Couple, yeah, nice. And cup of having water. the cup. No, but having the cup of coffee, they make like With, have the water go clear, be clear going in and brown coming out, not brown going in and coming out. More brown coming out, extra brown coffee. Browner. Uh, so there's a couple things here. Um, uh, when. You disturb the terrain on top of an aquifer, it loses the quality of runoff to the brook streams and obviously the water that settles into the aquifer because you're building unnatural uh, landscapes that do not allow runoff to flow the way it normally would to it. So this could cause um, a depletion in the aquifer, which means it's not getting recharged and recharged just means there's enough overflow in the actual rain and runoff from streams and lakes and whatever to f- refill the aquifer uh, the way it needs to be in order to supply us with water. Um, and when that happens, if a aquifer becomes depleted, and I didn't know this, do you know what happens? I'd assume people don't have water to drink, but I don't There's know other... how much worse it's going to be because... So if you're building on that area that the water is depleted... That losing the... Uh, underground water source means there's a giant gaping hole down there. So I'd assume a lot of stuff's going to collapse into it. Correct. Basically, you are generating a giant sinkhole. That's exactly. Way under the ground because you were taking, it was full of water. Now it's empty. And nature abhors a vacuum and gravity exists. So if you put things on a hole, it will fall into the hole. Yes. Sinkholes. You cause sinkholes, so you're. Yes, so now we're looking at a ginormous development on that has the potential to uh, deplete an aquifer and just collapse in on itself. So I'm um, looking forward into the future too, with if, if if it possibly became contaminated, which groundwater is not very easy to clean. No, it's incredibly difficult to clean. Yes. That's why it's. That's why generally screwing with the groundwater is like last on the list of things to do because as yes. soon as you mess up the groundwater, you are just. <clears throat> Blink, bleep out of luck. I yes. mean, it's you, you are not okay. And not just, again, we're looking at the issue of um, if there's no water recharging the aquifer, then cleaning it the way that's supposed to happen uh, takes that much longer because uh, you, you're working with just, I don't know, goopy soil that's just contaminated and the water isn't actually going through and filtering it the way it's supposed to. Yeah, I mean, especially if you drain the water. Yeah, because you're draining the water out, so everything that's supposed to be cleaning and flushing it out is not doing that. So you're kind of... And the Community Land and Water Coalition had some concerns about this. Now, several... um, like environmental groups and agencies have spoken out, not just in the meetings, but have published works in newspapers, uh, Wicked Local and in the Wareham Weekly about their concerns for this. And they were expressing concerns about uh, how little contaminants 
they are required to test for in this zoning proposal. Okay. So far, they're only testing for nitrogen. Um, which yes, that's and that's actually a Massachusetts thing. You have to be yeah, testing that's a, for that's well, a state yeah. Thing. But at the same time, if you're like, no offense against anything, nitrogen is bad. But there's other things we can test test for. Uh, it's yeah. not it's not just that, but like there are other things that you can test for. And if you're doing you know construction work and industrial work and building a casino with you know games and slots and sewage and restrooms and you need to make sure none of that's getting to the groundwater because if you're not testing for it you don't know what's going to be there you're just going to kind of go eh. yep like if we're not looking for it's the kind of thing where if you're not looking for it it's not there but since we're not infants anymore that's that's how peekaboo works that's not how you know anything after that works so yeah they they it just doesn't actually give enough um requirements as far as the testing and how broad the, the spectrum of contaminants is that they're testing for. Yeah, Clearly, they're just the, testing for nitrogen. They're just testing for the things they're legally required to, not for anything that they might actually right. be worried about. And uh, one of the other things is that they're, they suggested that there be recourse written into this uh, zoning okay. proposal because so far, um, if the developer were to have let a contaminant into the water, they... Wareham citizens are footing the bill to fixing it, which is and cleaning it. A to be like a load that would any amount of income we potentially could have imagined coming in from this yeah, project it's the kind of would thing be where gone. It's the casino and the horse tracks rate mess. Why are you the yeah. people responsible for the bill? Right, that kind of record. It's like it's common sense, and from a legal perspective, it's entirely reasonable because it's. Yes, if you guys make a mess of this, you guys are responsible for cleaning it up. Is right. you know, and mind you, there's still reasonable. there's still um, this is just like in the pre, no one's put a bid in technically. Although the notice group has been just so kind as to help write this, um, with their representation <laughs> that shows up at every board meeting. So it's the kind of thing where nobody's quote unquote bid on it, but. We know exactly who it. We just are. We really love giving our hard-earned money you know, to this lawyer to help us write these guys, the zoning proposal. So it's the kind of thing where, look, no, we're the sweetest people in the world. We're just letting our lawyer do all this. No, we're not going to bid on it. I don't know why you would think something yeah. like that. So anyway, uh, like I said, it would just take. It'd be horrendous to try and correct that. And I mean, no one thinks they can happen to their town until it happens to their yeah, town. Yeah, it's the kind of thing because I know back home. There is a there is somebody who was convinced that they should develop. Uh, I live in Bridgewater, and in on the Bridgewater random line, there is uh, Lake Nick, Nipponicket. It is a pretty big, fairly shallow lake, which that's part of the Wareham uh, Wareham yes. Triangle <laughs> Bridgewater Excuse Triangle. Excuse me, Hannah. <laughs> it's the Bridgewater Triangle. So help me, we we put our name oh, by we. I mean Lauren Coleman put our name on it for the. Absolutely no reason, but it's like it borders the Hockamock Swamp. It's yeah. a big. I've, I pond. remember the stories it's from big, it. It's a big shallow lake. Yeah, and fun to kayak on. But it's also like somebody was talking about. Yeah, we could just re, you know take all this and just put a big restaurant. It's like yeah, just no, just don't do it. Yeah, you don't need to. Like there are houses there, and then there is a plot of land that frankly isn't big enough to put anything on. So I don't know what you're trying to develop because you have no parking lot. You got people park for the lake, and that's it. But people will park there as soon as they can go on the lake again when it gets nice out. Right. Um. So we talked about groundwater extensively, and at this point, the only thing left is like the the Red Brook uh, Coalition. So there, this is bordering on Lyman Reserve, and it's very, very close to the Plymouth border. And this is actually a pretty sensitive area for the trout that use it to spawn in. Okay, so uh, as this is where I find out that I don't pay enough attention to the world around me. When you say the Lyman Reserve, mm-hmm. do, you, do you can you get into what that is, or it's I? just like a it's a tr- I, it, it's a reserve. It's not a trusted area. Lyman is um, the name of the person that they named it after, and it's just a like a, a a nature reserve. You go and walk your dog there, and it's right at the end of Cranberry Highway on the Plymouth side. So by like. Yeah, because I know that the Lymans were a big family yeah. here a long time ago. Yeah. 
one of my best friends growing up was a Lyman. Who, oh, no way. And then, like, years later, I realized, oh, there's a Lyman place. And it's like, sweet. Oh, that's that's your family. Yes, yeah. I would, I would it's pretty safe to assume it's the same yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it, well, that's the kind of thing where it's like, I knew one Lyman. He was my best yes. friend until, like, third grade. That's hilarious. But, like, growing up, it's like, I never realized they had been there forever. It was, like, Lyman's, and then you go a little bit north, and all of a sudden, it's Keith's, and it's, yeah. like... So, the project would pretty much reach right over to Lyman Reserve, which... Okay, so, per Wikipedia, the Lyman Reserve is a 210-acre nature reserve in Bourne, Plymouth, and Wareham, and is managed by trustees of reservations. There are a mile and a half of hiking trails, a beach... And is near the Red Brook Reserve and the Red Brook Wildlife Management Area. Mm-hmm. I've literally never heard about this, and I feel like I kind of want to go hiking. It's really nice. And the Red it, Brook Reserve area is really nice, it, too. It's the kind of thing where in a, I'm going to say, po- like, late COVID world, finding places to go that are fairly isolated but like still outdoorsy seems like the kind of thing that if you want to go out and not deal with humanity which frankly no one should like that seems like the kind of place that i'd never heard of yeah it's but then really again cool. i didn't know about lake rico until about a year and a half ago so and yeah. i it's the next town over we discover something new every day it's embarrassing because it's a 10 minute drive from my house and I had literally there was a lake 10 minutes from my house that I did not know about yeah. until I got invited to go do yoga in the woods there so fun so the um, the red red brook is obviously like a pretty sensitive area and any anything that yeah, anywhere you're gonna get like trout running is, yes exactly y- yeah you can't mess with that because they don't have like an alt that they don't have anywhere else they're going to they decide to go. They don't have Google Maps. They don't have, like, <laughs> seek al- – they can't, like, get out there and no. go, ooh, seek an alternate route. That's it's where like, they're going to try and go every this year. This is where we're going because this yeah. is the only way we know how it's to go up. It's in their genetics. This is where my great-grandparents came yeah. down, and this is all I got, kids. This is where we're going. So, um, And if you mess that up, it's great. You've killed thousands of fish. Exactly. For, you know – and you're not even going to eat them, which is just <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> The rare, uh, so one of the other reasons that people are speaking of about is how rare the ecosystem is in the area that is um, covering it. It's the rare pine barrens. Do you know about the pine barrens? Unfortunately, when I hear pine barrens, I immediately think New Jersey and the Jersey Devil. So I did Yeah, not. it's the same thing. So It's, it's the same concept. Okay, yeah, it so grows in three areas in the United States. I don't actually know what pine barrens are ecologically. I can tell you. I would really like that, actually. So, uh, like, <laughs> like, I am not trying to feed you. I am honest. Now that I've realized that is not just the name of a place, but it's an actual, like, yes. ecological area. So it's very... I, I want to know that. It's Please very, go on. It's very interesting how Pine Barren ecosystems are formed, and they uh, benefit from the fires, from wildfires, taking out other species. So okay, that cause, that's yeah, what, pines are pretty fast growing trees yes, from what so that they can take from over what my area. front yard tells me and then it's mostly a lot of um pitch pine scrub pines uh, uh red and white pine but mostly pitch pine okay in, and in my defense pine, i do love me some white pine yes white pine can't go wrong well there's a white pine growing on my driveway and any time it snows instead of getting like six inches on the driveway to clear we get like maybe one and a bunch of pine needles yeah, no, not even pine needles. No, because by the time yeah. it hits, like the pine needles will like have already fallen. Yeah, and at that point, I'm just like, I look out and it's like, oh, we got a foot of snow, and then I look at my driveway and, oh, we got two inches of snow. This is the best. Right. I love I love white pines. They're great. So they're my favorite tree. Tr- if are, anyone doesn't know, white, white pines, pines are, are like, my favorite. They're tree. giant. <laughs> white pines get really big. Yeah, they're huge yeah. and they're like they sprawl out. And, yes, they're awesome. They're like I'd consider them like the the trees over on the east coast, like the huge cedars and like redwoods. Like those are the big trees yeah, of out, our you, area. Well, yeah, you go out west and you get like cedars and sequoias, yeah. and then you come east and it's like it's all white pine, white pine. <laughs> white. So it's a lot of just different pine trees. But you will be happy to know as as long as we're on the topic of oak trees, if people didn't know we were talking about oak trees. <laughs> As long as we're on the topic of the thing I edited out, go on, Hannah. Yeah, uh, scrub oak is part of it as well. So yeah, okay, it's just, yeah, because scrub oak, it, it anything like that, I assume is a fairly 
quick growing tree, and I assume it's one of the ones that yes. require, like, I don't know if it requires, but is aided by fire in its um, in pitch pine reproductive cycle. Peach peach pine, no pitch pine is in as is as well. Their pine cones are activated and released when you uh, when like with yeah when, fire. when he com- yeah because yeah. and he yeah. Not just fire. Yeah, well, yeah, but I don't see <laughs> anyone. It, I don't see a lot of people walking around the uh, forest with like hair dryers. Mm-mm. Okay, now I want to see a lot of people walking around the woods with hair dryers trying to get the pines to grow. Uh, so, who, can I fund? Who do I talk about funding that? <laughs> I think pitch pines. Well, they could. There could be more. They only grow in that type of setting in three areas yeah. of the United States. Um, so, likewise, we just talked about a lot of natural habitat in a big area of Wareham. Yeah, which is... So, obviously, there's hundreds of species of animals and bugs yeah. that live there. So, another real big reason why people don't want to see that go. Um, specifically, the people who live very close to it, including myself, because where are those animals going to go? Yeah, because one, they're going to end up in, in, in your yard. Yes. Which, I'm going to be completely honest, Hannah. I'm pretty sure that if a bunch of like animals ended up living in your yard, you'd be fairly okay with it depending on the animal like not like the deer yeah or you know the skunks i'd be fine with deer De- deer are <clears throat> kind of impolite neighbors yeah. at times <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's they, a lot of deer out there too. i know but they're also they're they, they're big and require a lot of upkeep but yeah. like nobody you know squirrels nobody cares if there are extra squirrels in the yard you can deal with that or you know opossums which are very cool animals and the kind of thing that we should really be paying more attention to because we have one marsupial outside of australia and we think it's a pest which is so strange have you ever seen anyone like interact with them like wild ones you they're so docile you can literally go and pick one up I'm not going to, but you can. No, because I've it's rude because they're it. wild animals and you don't do that, yes. but you could totally could. It's very weird. Don't Admittedly, do that, Admittedly, a big part of my turnaround on possums is a, an episode of the Species Podcast that I listened to a couple of weeks ago, which is like four years old, but yeah. God, it was cool. Yeah, opossums are really cool. Yeah, opossums are super cool and the kind of thing where they are literally a class, like I can't get to say class, cause, but like they're a whole they're in a league of their own. They they are utterly unique us out of Australia, and we think yes. they're, you know, garbage-eating pests. Like, no, they, they are they super cool. They are the cool. Gina Davis of the animal kingdom. Okay. <laughs> H- Hannah, I'm going to ask you to kind of explain that a little. A league of their own? Okay, that's fair. Okay, yeah, Gina Davis. Yeah, yeah. there's no crying opossums. No yes, exactly. So, uh, Southeastern Massachusetts Pine Barrens Alliance is another, obviously, group that is involved in protecting that. I did not know that existed, and yes. I feel like I want to now. And I spoke with them today, and they I'm are honestly looking- surprised you didn't join. I, I liked them on and Facebook. I didn't, and, I mean, haven't. Yes, and they, there are opportunities to volunteer, so I'm definitely looking into yeah, it's, that. Yeah, because, I again, I didn't know that Pine Barrens were... A thing to look out for? I didn't know they weren't just what they called the Pine Forest or, in Jersey. Right, right. So, so it's the kind of thing where I didn't know it existed elsewhere as a... I didn't know it was a kind of biome that existed elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So they, I uh, spoke with them today, and they're in a, that group and a few other environmental um, protection groups yeah. are looking into specific grants that could possibly. It was mentioned that there's a grant out there from the federal government that that area could likely qualify for, for the government to grant the town to not develop the land. Yeah, because it's and create environmental. It's like. And biologically or environmentally. Yeah. And create... I don't want to say unique, but like... It is. It definitely is. And well, create ecotourism. So similar yeah, to like of, Lyman Reserve, it okay, just yeah, extends it's, that. It's a place to, you know, go and take a hike. Go. Mm-hmm. Take a hike is not what I want to say, but go for a hike. Some of them could take a hike right now. The select I mean, sure. Can't we all at some point? <laughs> uh, so one of the other reasons uh, that the town is just against it, I've already talked about several of them, is the holes in this proposal... <laughs> And the civil engineer that works for the town, uh, every so often, he's very well versed in everything proposal wise because he's been a civil engineer for so long. He just pointed out so many holes 
and just had such high scrutiny on this because he doesn't want anything going in for the town that we are going to end up paying in, for, paying for, in deep trouble for anything we can't turn around yeah, easily. Kind of, any decisions we, ma- I mean, decisions are final are technically final, but it's the kind of thing where, like, there are some things you literally can't. I don't know if walk back's the word, but like, you you can't fix you can't dig out of you can't mm-hmm. amend so, it's like you've decided to build here great as soon as you've started digging you've yeah great it's broken now you can't you can't plant replant the trees because mm-hmm. they're 150 years old you can't put the the spotted newts back you can't put the spotted newts I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you spotted newts are so cute. They're adorable, <laughs> but like you can't put like the spring the peepers back. You can't. No. You can't put any of it back once it's you done. You can't put like the oh god, like the red. I think red bellied turtles is like a turtle super that, endangered. Turtle. Yeah, that lives literally like here in like part of Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's it, which is one of those things. When I found, out, I was like, that is so. First of all, that is hyper rare, and secondly, here in Pennsylvania is a weird pair of places because yeah, they're not connected. Just where they got cut off from each other. Yeah, so it's like at some point they lived in like, you know, the Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York area and they just don't anymore. Um, and obviously we've talked about the cons kind of of a casino and horse racing track, but I think we kind of all know uh, casinos don't drive the healthy, healthiest habits in people. No. Um, gambling in general doesn't and it all no. just promotes poor quality of living to some extent for those who do become addicted yeah, to I it. Yeah, I mean, at some point, building a casino means you are trading off the health and well-being of your customers for the health and well-being of your employees. Right. And I mean, it's almost, I can't say it's one-to-one, but it's the kind of thing where the you're basically the doing harm economically because... Very few. I mean, it's this kind of thing where you go in and if you go to a casino, you're either the kind of person who goes in casually, go in, play for a couple hours, maybe catch a show, have dinner, and leave. But and then it's cool. But at the same time, anyone who ends up with a problem there. Did you notice how what the order of what you said too? Right. So you go catch it, a show. It, it was literally the uh, thoughts running through my head in that order. No, you know? no, but. Notice that everything you mentioned would be taking place in that development yeah, and not and anywhere else nothing, in town. Like, yeah, you'd be going in there and you would go to the casino. Go to the restaurant in the casino. In the casino because there's – at that point, well, I'm already there. Why am I going to move my car? Yes. And then you would leave On and that. you wouldn't end up at like – Water with. I swear to God. There are <laughs> – there are other restaurants and businesses in Wareham, and the fact that I can't name literally any of them no, is No, there's, there's a lot wait, of good no, places. Wait, I take it back. There's a Home Depot in Wareham, and there is a um, – nope, that's all I got. There's a lot of good, really like, good – there are th- places in yeah, Wareham. Bailey's is really good. It's right up the street. Yeah. Lindsay's. Um, Kruatai, too, is my, one of my favorites. Yeah, no, there's I'm, some good I pizza places. I am more than willing to admit that the fact that I don't spend a time t- – like – any time in Wareham is why. I don't know any of the cool places to go in Wareham. El Mariachi is by far the best Mexican food I've ever had. And I'm saying that to the restaurants that are right up here. Yeah, right in downtown. I'm oh, going to no, take that. Oh, no, you're saying that there's better Mexican food than San Diego's? Yeah. <laughs> Gasp. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, that's – it's San Diego's. It's not clear enough. I mean, bar. even going to our, our – I mean, Solstice is really good, but I don't know how Mexican it is. No. It's not very much. No. Um, so uh, the idea of the casino and horse racing track is kind of going out the window. I actually I don't know about the horse racing, but I don't know how that falls into like the gambling um, licenship. So the casino, you guys remember a while back the Wampanoags were going to court. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in Middle Earth to open it up. Yeah, it was near where Andy lived at the time. And they, uh, so they just won that suit, so they did get rights to their land. Oh, cool. And so they may be doing that. They haven't released any plans yet, but they might be doing a casino okay, there. on that, like, just off that stretch of 44. I where... believe so. And now that's making the notice group pull back on the concept. They have now just been saying, we don't know what's going to go there. Even though they had a whole plan yeah, set up for it, because all of a sudden the pre-existing, well, the plan by the Wampanoag to build a, an indie casino, 
And yes, I know, but that's what they're called. They, everyone calls them Indian casinos. I know that's not the best term. Mm-hmm. But that is both a prior claim and the kind of thing where it's no no offense to Wareham, but if you put it off 44, it is way more convenient to yes everybody. Everyone. Yeah. everyone. Including, a, frankly, a big chunk of Wareham, who's probably easier jumping on. <laughs> For some people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like nothing against the Cranberry Highway, but as soon as, like 44 is a major artery through most of Southeast Mass. Mm-hmm. And if you can build off that, you are way better off than building off of you know, Route 25, which is, like, not a ma- – it, it's a major road for, you know, Wareham, but it is not a major road. Right. Um, I'm just reading what's in here. So, oh, so I know we talked well, about – it's most of what we pay for, Hannah. Yeah, it's um, – <laughs> I was reading um, a little bit more, and so a few people have brought up the fact that Wareham is kind of reaching its sewage limit. Like, we oh, don't have the then infrastructure. Oh, by all means, let's put a casino in. So the, Nobody goes to the bathroom with a casino. So the zoning does allow for wastewater treatment plant on the premises, which we okay, kind of well talked that, about. Yeah and, yeah, and as a perk, assuming it's a high enough capacity treatment plant, you could put up more residential and commercial mm-hmm. areas. Elsewhere, assuming it's connected to the town, but at the same time, it's... But they don't have to do that. And if you don't have to, then why would you? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's just <laughs> allowed if you want to. But it's the kind of thing where if you're smart, going, hey, man. Yeah. We're putting this anyway. We can hook it up to the rest of the network and, you know. You're right. Let the town grow. Marketing-wise, that is probably what I would do. But I'm also not the kind of person to say, hey, let's build a casino and horse racing Mm-hmm. Area, so it, I'm probably not the best person to talk about this. So, as I've said before, like most, I'd say 99% of the posts I see, because right now my goal is just to be as active, as informative as possible on the Wareham pages to make sure people know that they can vote in the special town election. Um, as long as you're registered and a resident of Wareham, you can vote in it. Which I am. Well, Hannah is a resident of Wareham, and while I'm a registered voter, I'm not a registered voter in Wareham, as I do not live there. Correct. So you have to have an, a registered address in Wareham, and uh, you can vote at the special town election. Yeah. So honestly, too, just going into anything that has to do with it, because this is like one of the hottest topics of conversation in the town, thankfully now, because it's on people's radar, but for a long time it was not. Um, so do you think it was the kind of thing they were trying to sneak through? Yes, so it's 100%. No- so basically the kind of thing where nobody's <laughs> looking and all of a sudden, hey, we're building a casino. So and- all the people I've talked to, like the people I work with, I'm like, oh, the casino thing is coming up. And they were like, I thought they put – because when it first happened, they uh, threw – kind of trashed the idea. Yeah, because Something was – the, the frankly, initial idea was kind not, of a bad idea. Yeah, the initial idea was too big. It was too crazy. So they trashed it and brought it back up. So everyone thought they were just done – with yeah. the casino. And idea. then they tried to sneak. So they, it, they basically brought the big and practical idea, had it rightfully trashed, and then tried mm-hmm. to bring it back as a slightly less big and practical idea. Smaller and, pe- and less, you know, noticeable. All right. Um, and lastly, I just want to point out something an interaction I have had. So clearly, I've emailed the selectmen in my town, and I was reached out to by mm-hmm. one of the selectmen that has written a an opinion piece for Wicked Local, uh, Selectman Slavin. And he, um, he wrote that this is uh, a zero risk to the residents of Wareham that this plan is zero risk, and he um, didn't talk about the groundwater. That has been brought up to him at every single meeting. So does he just not at all. drink water or bathe? I don't know where he lives, but if he's a resident, then he doesn't have um, like how water, I guess. Detached. Well, yeah, but even if you've got a well. I know. I have no idea. You're digging your well into the same aquifer that everyone else, you know, has. It's not like you get your own. Nobody takes, like, imported water Nobody gets their shower water from Poland Spring. Who knows? Either way, it was like a pretty upsetting thing to see that he was just uh, not giving the full spectrum of concerns and saying that it was zero risk when, in fact, if you're messing around with groundwater, it's a very big risk. Of course. Um, so I just want to point out that his response to my email where I was giving my concerns was around the same time that he had that opinion piece published and he said um, that he was also concerned about the aquifer 
So I just thought it was very interesting at um, how washed of an opinion piece he gave when he has so admitted to people it, that he is concerned about the groundwater. It, yeah, you can kind of get the sense that he wasn't entirely, I don't know if I want to say honest because I've never met the guy, but he was, He's filtered. Obvi- he was obviously, yeah, unlike the drinking water he was going to end up with. But yeah, it's the kind of thing where he obviously had, he was presenting one side of the argument and yes. frankly nothing else. Right. So um, the selectmen are misguided in their agendas. That's my personal opinion. And it has been for a while. And a lot of people in town feel that. And if something, if this goes through and is not, if this goes through, these guys aren't getting reelected. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. So basically, it's enough of a negative. The town has enough of a negative opinion on it that if you make this your decision, it is your last big call because you would. Because so, homie, Hannah will run against you, and Hannah will win. (laughs) It's a really it's a it's a bad call. So future so future selectman Hannah. Yeah, it's. I'm sorry, select person. person. It's fine. I don't care. Call me whatevs. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. But I, it's, it's just crazy. I, I can't believe what's happening right now. It seems like such an un- undermining of everything in the people, everything in the town that the people want and don't want. Um, because majority don't want this from, from all accounts that I can see, at least on social media. So we will find out for sure if, um, if the town votes it in yeah. or out. And then it will be brought up to a full town vote because because the way your the mm-hmm. Wareham government is built, so it's not like the select me get to make this call. It's a everyone gets to vote on this, which means that everyone needs to show up to vote on this because it this is your drinking water. This is the water you make your coffee with. This is the water you bathe in. This matters a lot, and it's kind of it's. It's, it's the worth, kind of thing where it's worth more than a it's, a it's cup, worth a more time it's at a worth casino. more than you know a casino and it's worth a lot it matters this is the big deal for you guys and it's a kind of moment where you get to sit you get to show up and go yeah no I don't want you guys to ruin my drinking water to put up a casino and it's entirely on it's entirely where he's decision to do this mm-hmm. and not the town as a town but the town as its people. Um, and just like wrapping up my thoughts, Wareham is not a wealthy town, quote unquote. It's not a big town, but it's it's filled with a lot of good working people who moved there because it has a niche area of being close to things but far enough away to have your own little piece of like yeah, it's paradise. It is. And not everyone will feel that way about Wareham, but residents do. We have a lot of pride in living there. To put it, it's like, it's not quite rural, but it's not quite suburban. It's kind of like that sweet spot in between where it's, you know, this is my house and this is my neighbor's house. And this is the, you know, 450 acres of woods that are, you know, behind us because this is where I want to live and this is the kind of town I want to move yeah. to. And people move there because they like the woods people, and they like the privacy there because they and like, they like the quiet. Yeah, people move yeah. there because they don't they want to be close enough to get to places but they don't want them there. Mhm. Um and from like I said, there's if you go on the Where Hand Matters page and look at anything trending about this, um it's pretty clear that no one wants it and everyone's pretty pissed. <laughs> so, uh so, April 10th. So ideally in April we can kind of follow this up and yes. find out that Yes, the people of Wareham said, yeah, no, this is not okay. Why do you think this is a good idea? April 10th at 12. Right now, they have postponed this vote four times already. Okay, which... Which is a a tactic they've used before. Yeah, if if you push it back, people will forget about it. Yes. Yeah. So April 10th uh, at 12 at the Wareham High School field. It's outside for COVID safety protocols. And... um, if someone's listening now that needs help getting there or needs help registering to vote, I volunteer. Whatever services I can help you with, 
If you would like to move to Hannah's house in Wareham for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. She's got a lot of room. She's got some very cute dogs and other animals that are also cute, but I can't remember what they are. Birds? They were birds. I got a bird, yep. I it's a, a very fish. nice bird. Yep. I'm not I'm not Hannah's pet. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's important and you know what? It's important to uh our neighboring towns as well. So I think it's yeah, um, I mean it's, it matters to make the decision yeah, not and, just for I mean, us but for not other Not just people. for Plymouth, but you, if you live in if yeah, not just for Wareham, sorry. Mm-hmm. If you live in Plymouth, if you live in Kingston, if you live in Car- it's just Carver, Carver Wareham yeah. in Plymouth. Yeah, but it's that same Right. Yeah, it's the kind of thing where if you live n- in the next town over Make sure your neighbors know about it. Make sure that your buddy who lives in Wareham knows about it. Mm-hmm. Make sure that the bartender at your local bar who travels, you know, 15 minutes down the road to get to work, make sure they know about it because it's your home. It's your water, too. And even if you're not there to vote, make sure that, you know, your opinion still matters. Your voice still matters. Make sure that people who can do something about it know what you think. Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't have put it better myself. And I mean, that's, I, I may have some updates rolling in. Every day is something new and something slightly changed, but yeah, that's what well, I have so fine. far. You know, Theo Colin and Cass on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram will, you know, I'm going to say follow the story, but yeah, we will const, we will keep, like a constant update because this is part of what we think we should be doing. We are a local history and local events podcast. And this is a, frankly, a local big deal for people who live in Southeast mass. So yeah, we will kind of keep up with this because this is what we think we should be doing. And this is why we're here. That is why we're here. And is this when we stop talking? Yeah, I think this is the part where we stop talking. <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's podcast. You can find us on all social medias at inebriart or on Instagram at inebriart6. You can email us at inebriart at yahoo.com. And make sure you listen to the other podcasts on the Inebriart Podcast Network, including Bar Talk, Old Colony Cast, Retro Redoctopus, America's Hometown Horror Podcast, and our newest one, Theme Park Legends, a podcast about working at theme parks. What else? And we'll catch you again next time.